All right, my brothers and sisters, for those who don't know me, my name is Pastor Anthony S. Makasi. I serve as the proud pastor, senior leader, teacher, and preacher of the new church. The new church is currently located, our main campus, at 2817 Utah Street. That's in South St. Louis, Missouri, 63118. We are a church where every experience is a new experience. We aim to do three things, and that is to love God, to connect with each other, and to serve community. My brothers and sisters, that being said, we are definitely indeed the house of miracles, and not only are we are the house of miracles, we have co- cultivated a community in which deems itself to be impact nation, a nation that is considerably availed to advance the kingdom of God, to disrupt the plans of the enemy, and to shift atmospheres. And, oh, I am so glad that you're on this call this morning. This morning, I want to get to prayer quicker than I usually do. But before I get to prayer, I want you to declare three things over our life that I feel like God put in our spirit to give to you and to anybody who listens to this call in the future on YouTube. I want to give you three things as you got your nets, as you have your nets, or if you have your nets figuratively in your mind. I want to give you three things that I hear God clearly tell me to speak over not only your life, but over the house life and even over my life. There's three things that we need to embrace. Number one, we need to embrace this sense of rejuvenation, rejuvenation, rejuvenation. God says that he is, I believe God is saying that God is saying that uh, he wants the body, the body of believers to have a sense of rejuvenation. What do I mean by that, Pastor? I, what do you mean by that, Pastor? I mean a deep and authentic level of energy to execute. I mean a deep and authentic high level of energy, that is, to execute. I'm rejuvenated. I have a deep and authentic high level of energy to execute. The things that God wants you to accomplish and conquer, even those things that are on your list of your heart's desire, you're not going to be able to do it in a lethargic position. You're not going to be able to do it in a dismal state. You need to come up energetically so that you can execute. Now, I know that we believe and trust in God and that is the impetus. That is the start. In fact, that is the nucleus that we must put our hands in the hands of God. But God also wants our hands to move. God also wants our hands to grind. God also wants our hands to get into the situation. And so many of us have considered ourselves complacent by sitting on the sideline because of some things that we did not see transpire in our past. We become frustrated, agitated, and irritated. And God told me to speak a sense of rejuvenation over your life, that this is the day on this morning that you're going to gain that high level of energy, that deep and authentic high level of energy that you may be able to execute and see those things come to pass. We're in quarter two. We want quarter two to far outshine and outdo quarter one. Quarter two is the month of April, May, and June. Quarter one was January, February, and March. And so whatever you accomplish in quarter one, I see in the spirit of rejuvenation, you're going to exceed that. You're going to 10x that. But if you did not accomplish much in quarter one, I'm still speaking that you're going to come up in this spirit of rejuvenation. The second thing that I want to declare over your life, and I'm about to pray in a second, I want you to deal with this idea of rejection. I'm not talking about you being rejected. So we got rejuvenation. We got rejection. I'm not talking about you being rejected. rejected. I'm talking about you walking in rejection. What are we rejecting, Brother Pastor? We are denouncing all of the faithless energy, amen, all of the faithless energy that we have absorbed. We need to reject anything and anybody that is trying to come against our positive road of trajectory. We need to come today to say I reject and denounce conversations that are not positive, that are not pushing me to where I need to be. I reject the fellowship of people who are going against where I'm trying to go. I reject the thoughts that are coming in my head that saying it is not so, because whenever you want to move for God, you must expect the enemy to come in like a flood to try to stop you. And so we need to reject some stuff. I'm asking you, what do you need to reject? Or who do you need to reject? Or what atmosphere do you need to reject so that you can move to the next level? You have your list. What is it? Because the enemy is working overtime to get you 
far away from the path of positive trajectory. And so we must reject those things. So we have rejuvenation. We have rejection. Then God said we have to spend some time rejoicing. What is rejoicing? That is the power and will to celebrate. Far too often, my brothers and sisters, have we become so enamored by just doing stuff that we stop or that we fail to stop and just rejoice. And so we need to celebrate wins, whether they're small, whether they're big, whether they're tough, whether they're rough. And so I want you today, I don't want you to go to work or whatever you got to do today. If you got your own business or if you're just seeking uh, employment, I don't want you to operate, amen, in this spirit that is pushing you away from rejoicing. So, again, we speak the spirit of rejuvenation. We speak the spirit of rejection that you are the one that rejected, and then we speak the spirit of rejoicing. And that is what I want to say to you on this Tuesday morning before we go to God in prayer because it's more about you today than about listening to me. And so, God, as we lift you up today, we lift you up to the highest pinnacle in which we can lift you up in the spirit. As far as we can lift you up, God, God, that's where we want to lift you up. We thank you, God, for being such a great big God, such an awesome God, such an incredible God, such an amazing God, a God that it is in you. We live, move, and have our things. We are so honored, God, to be able to even speak to you today. It is an honor and privilege, God, to be able to speak to you today. Sometimes we take that for granted, God, that you have given us the permission to even pray to you, that, God, that you've given us open access, God, to embark upon your kingdom, that you've given us open access to come into your lane, that you've given us open access, God, to speak to you and to pray to you. God, we don't ever want to take it for granted, God, that you've opened up that line of communication, God, straight from earth to heaven, straight from our bedrooms or our living rooms, God, to the throne room. And we thank you. And so, God, we lift you up today because, God, admittedly so, without you, we're nothing. We're like empty vessels. We are like worthless shells. God, we are mere dirt without you. We thank God that we serve a God who does not mind putting God's hand on dirt. In fact, the text would suggest that we were created from dirt. The text would suggest that Jesus had no problem with touching dirt. When he touched the the dirt and made healing mud, God, when he touched the dirt, when the woman who was caught in a very act of adultery, he touched and he rolled in the dirt. God, you are a God who does not mind putting God's hand on dirt because it is your hand that when it touches dirt, it touches us and it creates a certain type of spiritual vibe that makes us cleaner than we ever could be. And so that's what we're asking God for you today. We're asking for your touch. We're asking for your supernatural touch like never before to come upon us, God. Touch our hearts, touch our minds, touch our souls, touch our spirits. We pour out to you, God. It is your breath in our lungs. And so we pour out a praise to you this morning. And so, God, we saturate these airwaves now, these phone waves, God, and we pray for everybody who can hear my voice on this morning or shall hear this in the days to come. God, that their nets are breaking. Yes, Lord, that their nets are breaking, that everything that they have been waiting on and everything that has been held up in spiritual probate court, God, will be released. God, we're asking God for imminent signs of your favor. We're asking God for imminent signs of your favor. What do I mean by that, God? That, God, that you would give us signs this week even, that you hear us, that you would give us signs this week, God, that we are on the right track. God, give us, Lord, manifestation of hope, that, God, we just don't want to be declarers and preparers, but we want to be recipients, God, of that which we've declared and that which we've prepared. And so, God, we're praying God, for supernatural signs of your grace and glory over our life and over our circumstance. I pray for that lazy spirit now. I pray against it now, God, because, God, for where you have us to go as a people and as a body, God, we need to come up a little bit. We need to stop being so lazy. We need to stop making excuses. But, God, I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that we will not be excuse makers, but we will be executed. And so, God, I hear this sense of safety in my spirit. So, 
I pray for the safety of everybody on this call. I pray for the safety of everybody, God, that shall hear this in days to come, that type of safety, God, that will surround them with your presence, God, so that when they walk, they can feel you because the songwriter said that we're safe in your arms. And so now, God, as a community, as a church, you know, God, there's two things that I met. Number one, God, we're believing, God, for 50, a minimum of 50 new souls and partners at the new church in quarter two. And God, while many may think that sounds like a lot, God, I don't think it sounds like a lot. I think it's very doable, God, if we really believe, if we really trust, if every partner have a list, God, and we begin to pray, God. And why are we doing this, God? Because we simply want to disrupt the plans of the enemy, as we said in 2024, because the enemy's plans, God, is for us and for your kingdom to be shallow because the enemy does not want more people added. But, God, we already know that your kingdom can never be shallow. You are so deep. You have more depthness than we can ever think. You have more depthness than we can ever imagine. That's why I love that writer in Ephesians when he said, Now unto him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ever ask or think or imagine. In other words, your acts, God, goes way beyond our imagination. And so, God, that's why we need to imagine bigger. And so, God, the numbers that we put out is a stretch of our imagination saying, God, that we want you to touch it in the name of Jesus. But, God, we're not doing this to be grand. We're not doing this to be popular. We're doing this because we authentically want people saved. We authentically want people changed. We authentically want people to get to know you, as Paul said, in the power of your resurrection and the presence of your suffering. Now, God, that's not the only thing we pray for. We're praying for favor, God, as we are in intense renovations for the temple. We're in intense renovations, God, to get your building, God, that you blessed us with up to par, God, so that we can march in and so that we can open this thing up and have more room to do what you've called us to do. And more specifically, God, we are praying this week for favor concern our painting. That's one of the biggest jobs left, God, that has to be done. That's one of the greatest jobs. Everything else, God, is of the ancillary nature, but God, that is a job that humanly we can't do on our own. We need professionals to come in, and God, we need favor like never before. God, I know what the situation looks like. I know what the circumstance looks like. But, God, you gave us favor with being able to repair multiple holes in the ceiling when we uh, was at a stalemate. And so, God, we pray now for favor of the pain. And we pray, God, that funds will be released to fund this project to be debt-free. God, we pray, God, that you will send us the right people and that you will send us the right connections. And, God, that you will send us the right personnel in the area of contracting. God, that would not abuse us or take advantage of us, but God, that will do what you call us to do. And now, God, I pray over everybody's day to day. God, I pray, God, that you would touch their day, touch their mind, touch their heart. I pray for those things that are on their list, God, that you would do it, and God, that you would help them do it. And God, we thank you now. And we never want to end this call, God, without pleading the blood of Jesus. That is our priority, and that's our perspective. But every Tuesday, God, that we would call on the blood because we believe that the blood is that transforming supernatural fluid, God, that sends us into every area that we need to go. And so we plead the blood of our day. We plead the blood of our children. We plead the blood of our finances. We plead the blood of our hearts. We plead the blood of our life. We plead the blood of our energy. What can wash away our sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So, God, we plead the blood of Jesus now. We thank you, God, for every area and every dimension of our life, God, that you're going to change, transform, and matriculate through. We love you and we bless your name. God, I pray, God, that we have a great day and a great time in the Lord, and we're looking for great reports in the area of our pain. We love you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, everybody. Have a fantastic Tuesday.